For this video, we're going to review how to set up the Competition SR2 from Powerbox and to use the auto matching feature for the servos. Working on this CARF model's Extra 330 LX, which has uh, ganged servos on the elevators, as you can see here. Let's go together. There's a push rod that runs down the tail there. Yeah. There we go. And then on the roots of the aileron, sorry, the roots of the wings are the aileron surveys. So this is the right wing and this is the left wing. So I'll show you kind of how they go together and how the matching function, the auto matching function will make your life a whole lot easier. But to get started, uh, I want to walk through a little bit about how to set the radio up. And you can see the screen here on my core. You'll notice that um, there's going to be four aileron servos um, but you're really only going to use one channel from the radio. And this is important to make the auto matching work. When you go in to set up the, this, the radio, you're only going to use one channel per surface. So channel four is the right aileron, channel five is the left aileron. Uh, even though there's two servos in each one, you only want to use one channel from the radio. Same thing with the elevator. There's this channel six here you can see here. And that's even though there's two elevator servos, one rudder servo, of course you can see everything through. So in essence, this entire airplane with ignition and smoke is only gonna run on seven channels. So many beautiful things about uh, how Powerbox works and how the matching work. So you look at, we've got 26D receivers here going into Powerbox competition, SR2, and here's the screen. So what's important with this is when you get into the setup assistant, you see where it says ill on right and left, um, and you're going to change that servo count that's where you're going to add the second servo in for each aileron and elevator. So as we go through this, you'll see the count pick up and I'll show you in just a second. So here you see I've changed the servo counts for the right aileron to two, the left aileron to two, and the elevator right to two. The way I set my stuff up, because I'm an old JR guy, is that the right side I, I set up first as the primary. Um, so I set up two elevator rights, and then essentially I'm not going to use any elevator lefts or uh, uh, throughout this. So that's what you want to do is set these up so the servo count is correct. So I've gone over to the next page here, and then it says move the aileron stick quickly. And now you see it does have the correct number of channels uh, and the output. So. I said channel uh, aileron right is uh, channel four, aileron left is channel five, and then it pre-assigned the outputs correctly. This is really where I've seen some folks have struggled with this assistant, but it's because typically when they look at the screen here, they put too many servos in the radio. Uh, the radio only needs the number of channels for functions. So you have a function, which could be a surface. So for example, the right aileron is a function. The left aileron is a function inside aileron. Um, same with the elevator, not the number of servos. So you want to set this up a little bit different when you use the SR2 how to do this. So as we go through here, we'll go through each one of these here. This is next. And then same thing with the elevator. So as I move the elevator stick, you're going to see this. This over a little bit so you can kind of see it switch. So you see now it says count of found channels doesn't match. Okay, so we're made in errors where, where we go wrong with this a little bit is where that we miss a mist of uh, channel for the elevator. So let's go back, back, ah, right here. I didn't take out the left elevator so it thinks there's one more than there should be. So let's take that out. The next, that is correct there for the ailerons. Next, all right, so now it sees two outputs based on the assignment there, one elevator. Let's see what happens now. There we go. Bounce this once, boom. There's channel six, matches channel six on there. Wonderful, Hit next. Rudder, same thing. Rudder the rudder stick, point channel seven. Channel seven, really matches, next. We don't have any, um, any gain function, so we're just gonna hit next here, there's no gyro in this one. And that's it for the assistant. That's the important part of how the assistant works. Um, so just gonna make sure that again, that the number of channels is based on the function you have to work with the SR2. This is important when we do the matching because then when the auto match comes in, 
it's going to look for the two servos you have assigned to match together. So next part, we'll go into the matching. I use this spreadsheet to keep track of the Powerbox SR2 setup for the channels and the slots that things are plugged into, along with rates and setup. It's great and handy. You can hit it from anywhere, including your phone if you're at the field. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, kind of rigged up this uh, piece here that would normally be in the wing. So this is the aileron setup uh, for the Carf Extra 330LX 2.6 meter. This is the aileron um, servo setup for the right wing. So this is what we call the master, and then this would be the slave servo. So this, uh, so the way this works is that this this sits sideways in the root of the wing, and then the linkage would go out to the aileron over here somewhere. So normally what would happen is I would just leave these off like this, and then I would set um, the movement of this servo with the linkage on it so that the centers were correct and that the endpoints uh, were where we needed them to be. And then we would auto match the second servo, the slave, to the master. So let's walk through that real quick here. All right, so if we go in here, go in here, go into matching, Oops, that sequence, there's matching. And this is aileron A. Uh, well, first we need to initialize the channel. Initialize A. So initialize the channel first, so you're basically going to move the aileron stick all the way one way to the other, and you're gonna watch it go on here. That's a total throw, and I have the core set up for 100 and 100, negative and positive. Let's go in the correct direction, and okay. It says done. Uh, then we're gonna go down over to B. I like to do this to make sure that this thing goes through the correct direction. You never know. And then uh, I'm gonna initialize this one before, so we're gonna redo it here. Initialize B, same thing. So we'll throw and then move in the correct direction. Um, if the stuff, if the servos don't move the correct direction, you need to re reverse them in the power box here, um, where it would say reverse output yes or no. Um, and the reason why is that, if, especially if you're setting up a gyro with this, so it knows which way the gyro is supposed to behave. Do not do any reversing in the transmitter. Do it all, especially the flight controls, do them all in the power box. Same thing with the centers and endpoints. Leave up, no, put no, no sub trims in the radio, no, no endpoints, just leave it like 100 plus and minus and then do your do your setup in the power box that's the best way to do it all right so we go in here and we say initialized it already Oops. that's done now we're going to go to output a and normally like i said i would i would set the centers so let's take a look at this one it looks like it's off just a bit so Let's go in here to manually matching. It says zero, zero. All right, so now I'm moving along. So you can pick what you want. So this is an endpoint. If you wanted to check one endpoint, you can, if you, wherever you click this, um, then if the servo is gonna go, right? So you can go all the way there. It's gonna go that way, right? If you, if you go back off um, the center, exit. So we're gonna adjust the center. So let's just for argument's sake say, this looks like it needs to move back a little bit. So we're gonna adjust this one. All right, so let's say plus three. Right, all right, so there we go. And let's say that we need the aileron to move further in one direction, or maybe it's moving too far. So let's go to like, uh, let's say it goes back a little bit. Let's say it goes to like 90, just for argument's sake. All right, that looks good. All right, and by the way, this adjusts, this does adjust all the way through the range. So it's not just the endpoints, it's just adjusting. So this one, we'll see if adjust that one. All right, that one looks good, we'll leave it alone. All right, 
Now you notice when I'm doing this that both servos are moving together, even though I'm just in A. It's because it knows that they're gonna they're, that they are working together on the same channel. All right, so let's go back over to exit. So that one's set. Now we're gonna go to the auto matching. Now, now it says connect all servos and linkages and select auxiliaries. All right. So what this is saying is that you can go ahead and connect these these to these arms to the, sorry, these linkages to this arm. Um, what I'll say is first off is that I've already adjusted these linkages to be the same length, correct? Okay. So when you go in there and do this, um, you're gonna go ahead and select, it knows that, that this could be, this is in the slot already, that it's uh, the master's there. So it, if you look at this, it says, uh, it's hard to see on here, MA, that's master. And then we're going to go over here to click this one. Now it's going to say, so that a better angle here for you. it says one, right? So that's the first matching servo. So let's say you had a wing with three aileron servos. You would have the master that you set with the linkage on it. You would have the two slaves. You have one and two. It will adjust as many as you want together. Um, so. We're just going to do the two because that's all we have on this tray, right? So we'll back over here. Now, what's important too is that this second servo, you can turn this arm. It's like stiff, so it doesn't want to go, go moving around, but you can adjust it so that where, it, where the center should be so you can hook your linkages up. So you can kind of see in the hole there, see how it's, it's about, about right now since I moved it, right? This one should be about the same. It's a little bit tight, so we're gonna go that way just a tad, good. So then I go ahead and put the bolts and stuff in. And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and start the auto matching. So let me go ahead and put the bolts in it right now. All right, now everything is bolted up and ready to go. So we're gonna begin the auto matching. So we go over here, this button, we go back, and back it over to the bottom where it says start matching. All right, we're gonna go ahead and notice it says 0.53 amps, it's reading the amperage on it. So it's gonna hit auto matching. Now it's beginning. Now it's gonna start running the range. Automatically running, press set this to abort. So if something gets screwed up, you can press set to stop it, but it's gonna run through this range here. If you notice down here, um, the amperage, it's watching the amperage and it's making adjustments as it needs to, to make sure that it's um, optimized. So the good thing about this too is there should be some um, tension on it so that it doesn't allow um, one server to take more burden than the other. They should both move the same. Let's see, move real slow. And that's it. It's matched. So. And if you look at the amperage here, it's around 0.5 amps. And as it moves, I stop it, of course I keep my finger from moving, it's right around the same all the way through. That's maxed out, go the way. Wait. Pretty slick, can't get much easier than that. All right, let's check it out in the plane. So here's a real life example of what I was talking about before with the setting up the master and the slave setting up the master first. So first you wanna do is uh, come over to uh, your master and initialize it. So we're going to initialize here with output D, which is the master elevator servo. We're going to initialize, and then we're going to move the elevator servo stick here on the core. And you go all the way, 100 to 100. Okay, and you can see there's a lot of elevator in this thing. Look at this. Pretty good. All right, so what I would do then is, because we're in the matching piece, we initialize. We're gonna go down here to the manual. Oopsies, manual matching, there we go. We're gonna go to the center. So where the dot is, is what you're going to adjust. So we just wanna adjust the center here. Cause we got a little bit of up in this. I can't take any more of it out manually. So we're gonna adjust 
this one down. So we want this to come towards us. That's the wrong way. So go back this way. That goes. Oops, still too far. I'm crazy there. Let's double check this here. Make sure that's right. So, on the shot. And this one we're going to do a straight line test. Alright. So I've got a straight edge here. I'm going to stick a straight edge on it and make sure that these lines are as straight as possible. Okay, we've got the centers set now. You can see it's up about plus 17. And I'm going to hit the set button then, take it back. And just now move up and down the way they should. Okay. Now we're going to adjust the range of motion so that it goes up and down the way that I want it to. So if we go back in here and you look at where this this uh, where's on the screen here, the full elevator is all the way up that way, and the front elevator is all the way that way. So when you go into these things, the manual match, and you kind of, oops, there we go, use a little button, these old buttons here to move it, and you can kind of see, and if you see in between here, if I click it, you're gonna see the elevators go to that point automatically, you see? You're manually adjusting it, you can go ahead and adjust them left and right. Now, the nice thing with this setup is that it's on one big push rod, so they're exactly the same um, all the time. <laughs> so we're gonna go, go back to the end here. We're gonna set the overfill up. We can adjust this. Looks like we gotta take some of it out a little bit. And then we'll adjust the, uh, the down elevator too. So let me get a meter on that and we'll go from there. Okay, now the centers and endpoints are now set for the primary servo, which is or the master servo, which is this one. I made, I made some manual adjustments to take this down all the way I can to manually adjust it first, and this is where we are. We have a wicked lot of throw. Look at this. A lot of throw. A little more up and down, but I uh, can't go any further down because it will actually hit the elevator cable, so it's gotta be like 50, 55 degrees, some ridiculous amount of throw. Um, but if you notice here, I had already adjusted these um, links so that they're the same length. Okay, we've gone over to the slave servo, which is uh, output E here, uh, and we've initialized it. So you can see it over here, I like to do this to make sure that it moves the way it should, just to make sure it moves the way it should, moving the direction, important. And you can see the links are not hooked up yet. And that's this is what's really cool about this uh, manual matching thing is, uh, sorry, the auto matching is you can go in here then and we're gonna go over to uh, output D, which is the master. And then we're gonna go over here and hit auto match. Now, what's gonna say here is connect all servos and linkages and select all auxiliaries. All right, so we're going to select this one here. Okay. This is one now. Say it's this function A. But what you notice here with this is that um, you can move this. It feels like there's like tension in it. So you can go ahead and set this hole, the linkage where you need to, and hook it up. So we're going to go ahead and we can put the bolts in this, and we get this set straight, and then we're gonna let it auto match. Okay, now the slave um, is hooked up, you can see. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit the auto match here. Go down here. It says start matching, oops. This way. Start matching, now it's gonna do its thing. Just the ranges. Adjusting. And get each range here.
Okay. And that's that. Elevators auto matched. So, watch amp draw here. I have two. Right there. Right at the end. Same with this one. Done. Very cool. Super simple. Check it out. If you guys have any questions, please reach out. That is auto match. Can't be any easier.